happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How you doing? You have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate two feet before we nursed. Oh, listen, Laverne, it's a feast. I'm shaking like a dog shit pea seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour of Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about only the high line items of the barbecue and grilling industry. Still to come on the show this evening, the embedded correspondence for not one but two segments. If you're just tuning in to the second hour. You missed the first hour. You missed an interview with Anthony Murphy from the Beefy Boys, and then you missed an interview with John and John McLemore. The McLemore Boys. It was the first hour of boys. Oh, yeah. Boys. We say good evening to those of you watching tonight through one of our video streaming platforms. Facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show or Twitter.com slash BBQ Central Show or YouTube.com slash at BBQ Central Show where there is a YouTube poll question of the week going on. And we're asking everybody this, including all guests. The guy in this picture could beat my ass in three seconds, seven seconds, or ten seconds. And currently, 41% of you are now saying ten seconds. Thank goodness. The majority of you, by the way, it's a slim majority, are giving me the benefit of the doubt. 23% of you are saying seven seconds, and unfortunately, 36% of you are saying three seconds. So not half. There was at one point during the Macklemore Boys interview where we were 41% between three seconds and 10 seconds, but lucky to see that the majority of you now believe that at least for 10 seconds I could hold my own with this guy. I mean, never mind the fact that he looks like he just got done bench prints, uh, done uh, squatting Volkswagens. I mean, look at his thighs. I don't want to sound weird, but those are some thighs. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to sound weird no matter what I say about that, right? So 41% at 10 seconds, and I'll take it. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this coming Friday is episode 232. We take you back to March 11th, 2008, the year... That the show started, in fact, only almost one month into the date. We started uh, February 7, 2008. So a month later, you will hear a interview with a gentleman who was then on the board of the Kansas City Barbecue Society named Merle Whitebook. Uh, Merle now is currently dead. <coughs> so if you don't know Merle and you want to hear what he was like... and. As John mentions in the lead up to actually hearing the interview, it's a wide ranging interview. There's a lot of KCBS promo stuff, but at some point the interview transitions into him bitching about how other board members at KCBS were trying to toss his wife from being a representative or something along those, or maybe she was also on the board, but the, somebody at the KCBS or a number of folks at KCBS were trying to oust his wife and he didn't really take too kindly to that. So he broached that subject on March 11th of 2008, if you can believe it. So don't forget to tune in to that. You got to have a subscription to the podcast feed in order to do it. And maybe you would like to hear a guest or segment that you feel has been lost in the archives. You can email John and ask him for a segment or a guest, J-O-N, at the BBQCentralShow.com, and he'll do his best to meet your expectation. Also, 
Quick update on the raw chicken eating guy on Instagram. Uh -oh. Still alive. Yes, still pumping out raw chicken eating content. Yes. And he is at day 40, if you can believe it. Today he made raw chicken pizza, which consisted of a raw chicken breast with pizza sauce on it and then mozzarella cheese and some pepperoni. And he pretty much ate the whole damn thing. So 60 more days to go until he calls the experiment quits. I can't imagine at this point he's even going to get sick. He's done it for 40 days in a row. What's 60 more days at this point? I can classify him as a weirdo. I will also tell you that regardless of what this guy is trying to prove, which is raw chicken really isn't that disgusting, nor that unsafe for you to eat. In fact, go ahead and do it. Nothing's going to happen. I say the opposite. I say don't do it. How about that? I want to take a second, if I might, and acknowledge someone right now. Uh, this isn't going to be a barbecue-related acknowledgement, but my middle daughter, Maddie, attended a military ball over the weekend and during the evening. Her boyfriend, specialist Steve Susnick, was awarded the Pioneer of the Year, uh, Pioneer Soldier of the Year for 2023. <laughs> this guy right here on the right, obviously, dressed in his, uh, do they call him dress blues in the Army? But he's got his dress outfit on. And then, of course, Maddie off to the left. He has been a Army Reservist since 2019. He is based in Lorain, Ohio. Uh, Steve is a great guy. I've gotten to know him quite a bit over the past number of months, and he measures up to what I call exacting standards that I would hold for anyone who is going to date one of my daughters. Uh, so, Steve, I wanted to take a moment here on this show just to let you know how proud I am of you and your achievement. Uh, this is a huge deal, but perhaps more importantly, I want to thank you for your selflessness in service to this country. What you do is a calling, pal, and few people do it. In fact, as we get further and further into present day, Fewer and fewer people are volunteering to do what you do. So what you're doing is a big deal, and it allows the rest of us to live the lives that we want to and that we're allowed to every day. And again, very proud. I know your family's very proud of you as well. And I hope you took the time Saturday night to celebrate this great achievement. By the way, just so we're all on the same page, as a father of three daughters whom all have boyfriends at the moment, if you can believe it, uh -oh. I'm pretty lucky that all three gents seem to be quality human beings. That's, that's a lucky thing, I think, these, uh, this day and age, especially with the shows that I'm watching. However, let it be known that if any one of them get out of line and go against my standard, I will kill any and all of them easily and without hesitation or a second thought. I've said it before and I've said it again. I like them until I have to kill them. This is the way I need to operate for crying out loud. I'm sure you all understand. So outside of that disclaimer at the end, what do they call that? Yeah, disclaimer. Uh, very proud of Steve. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is our pal Steve. And getting the Pioneer Soldier of the Year Award in 2023. I mean, that's a huge deal. So congratulations to Steve. And uh, looking forward to celebrating when he makes it back home from Kent. Student at Kent State University, just like Matt is. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. I didn't talk about it over the last couple of weeks because there's been pressing issues to get to top of second hour. In case you didn't know. A Barbecue Central Show exclusive news update. Greg Reffrey reporting from the breaking news desk again here in Cleveland, Ohio, the city that breaks the most live fire breaking news across the country, nay, the globe. 
the World Food Championships is moving out of Dallas. Did you know that? Your new location will be one of my favorite cities ever, Indianapolis, Indiana. All great news. Here's the potential issue. The run dates for the event are November 8th through the 12th. Not that bad in Texas or any other southern state or Southern California or Arizona. However, really dicey here in the Midwest. Could be 60 to 70 degrees that week. Could be 6 or 7 degrees that week in Indianapolis. I'm pretty sure that this whole thing isn't inside either. It's a uh, hotly renovated fairgrounds location, according to what I read. So plenty of space. However, I think that's going to be plenty of outdoor space. I would be lying if I said that World Food Championships in November outside isn't going to be concerning me. It's concerning me. It is. But again, it could be 60 to 70 degrees early November. Worse yet, like Cleveland weather, it could be 60 degrees today like it was. And then tomorrow, it's going to be 32 degrees. You could also have that ebb and flow where you have 20 to 30 degree pitches every day that that competition is taking place. So if you didn't know it, they're moving out of Dallas. They're moving into Indianapolis. It's November 8th through the 12th. And my biggest concern is not that am I going to drive five hours to Indy? There's a pretty good chance. It's the weather. My concern is the weather being outside. Embedded correspondents are ready to rock. I will tell you about Franklin Barbecue Pit. Primarily made of quarter-inch American-made steel. It's strong. Anything that sees heat, engineered to be incredibly solid, should last at least a century or more if cared for properly. Thickness of the steel guarantees professional-grade heat retention. That's a critical component in making great barbecue. Franklin Barbecue Pits can be found at barbecue specialty stores in select regions of the country. If you, the listener, are an owner of such a barbecue store and you wish to become a certified Franklin dealer, please visit franklinbbqpits.com and fill out the dealer form on the website. Especially if you are looking to bring in an offset or you have some lower end items and you're looking to finish the product portfolio with a more elite product Franklin Barbecue Pits is the one. Uh, What do you have? Name recognition, you have top quality manufacturing, you have the offset sexiness that you can put on the floor so even if you're on the phone one day answering a customer's question in that end and somebody walks into the show floor you know what they're gravitating to right? The silent sales guy The Franklin barbecue pit on the floor. They're going to walk around it. They're going to open the door. They're going to see how the handle rotates for an easy door open. They're going to clunk on the steel, see how heavy duty it is. They're going to fall in love with the thing sells itself. So don't wait to bring it in. Get a hold of Franklin barbecue pits right now. FranklinBBQPits.com and sign up to be a dealer. The guy that we had on the show last week, Steve Ray, new dealer. He saw the values bringing them in. Hardville Hardware, sign them up, bringing them in. Don't be left out in the cold. Get on Franklin Barbecue Pits right now. We're back with the embedded correspondence right after this. Stick around, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Renfee. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. Hey, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes with a host of accessories. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a professional, it's a cooker you want to add to the arsenal. You visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. And you will be 
now in the midst of upright barrel smoking. By the way, I know everybody was wondering because I've complained about it the last number of weeks. My voice, so colonoscopy and the next day high register loss of the voice. I think we're past that. Get that big stuff out of here. I think we might have had a also at the same time virus in the throat area. I've gotten much high register back, the majority of it at least. Do I feel confident in singing? Not necessarily, but I think we're working towards it very quickly. Not that we sing on the show anymore, but uh, I don't know if anybody even noticed. But coming into the show tonight, was able to hit the notes that I wanted to and the register that I wanted to. So everything seems to be going in the right place. Once again, not dissuading anybody from getting the colonoscopy, only encouraging everybody getting the colonoscopy. Yes. So take it for what it was, probably an infection. And uh, Doug probably told me, he's like, look, back off, douchebag. You probably got a cold. Shut the fuck up. Hey, it's the fourth Tuesday of the month, and we have the embedded correspondence all right here. There's... Doug Scheiding, the aforementioned to my right from Texas, John Solberg just below me from the great state of Michigan and executive producer of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 Minutes or Less. And there he is, Caddy Corner, bottom right from the great city of Utah, Rusty Monson from the Salt City Barbecue Trailer and Associated Businesses. Guys, appreciate you joining me here. Before we get to the list, the slew, if I will, of 100% assurity questions, we will go to the YouTube poll question of the week. And we're asking everybody this. And Doug, we'll start with you first. The guy in this picture could beat my ass in three seconds, seven seconds, or 10 seconds. I voted down the middle seven. Seven. John, three, seven, or ten? Three for me, please. Thank you. Rusty, three, seven, or ten? Point three. Point three? <laughs> Point three. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> All right, smart guy. Yeah. Well, currently 42. Oh, well, bad news for me. It, uh, didn't swing in my favor the farther we went on. 42% of the voting public are now saying three seconds. <laughs> Come on. Look at me. I'm fit as a fiddle. I'm wiry. We'll see how it goes through the second hour here. 0. 0.3 seconds, Rusty. I mean, do you think you could last longer than me with that guy, Rusty? Did you see this guy? I mean, look at his legs. He's got big muscles. I don't know who the hell he's looking at. I mean, that's concerning. But, uh, I mean, this guy is this guy's all meat. He wouldn't even have to contact me. I'd just be, boom, you know, just lay it down. Just lay it down. Give up, surrender, tap out. All right. I'm going through the interaction here, and my wife, oh, where did it go? Well, I think maybe for the first time this year, definitely probably for the first time this year, uh, is watching the show. She put up this comment. Why isn't turning and running away an option? No kidding. <laughs> I can run fast. Yeah. Unfortunately, Quentin's a defensive back, so <laughs> chances are 100% that he's going to chase me down and beat my ass in 3, 7, or 10 seconds. So no reason to run. Otherwise, I, I like my chances of running away from anybody most of the time. All right, gang, we have a huge slew of 100% assurity questions. Doug will stay with you here as we get to number one. 100% yes or 100% no and timely. You are shocked that Smokin' Joe's Pit Barbecue closed his food trailer today. Yes or no? Unfortunately, no. Oh. <clears throat> John, you are surprised that Smokin' Joe is no longer smoking. To be here, the, the gentleman from Texas, unfortunately, no. <clears throat> To the guy who is currently living the dream of barbecue trailer guy or truck guy, Rusty, you surprised Joe's business is out? Not surprised, no. Mm. No, not surprised. I'm going against the curve. I bought in 100% to Joe. He sounded like he had his shit together. I was 100% blind faith all the way. I mean, the guy told me he was going to be in a restaurant in 20, a brick and mortar restaurant in 2024. <laughs> Whether you think it's funny or not, I was like, yeah, okay, John, I'm in. I can't wait to, to do a podumentary on how the, the restaurant unfolds. So 
Uh, yeah, I, you, I am you'll shocked. You'll believe all the freaking. You'll uh, believe I, all the YouTube viewers you can buy. I will absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know. I I was shocked that. Uh, uh, the other thing that shocked me was I think over the weekend he was talking about how there looked like there was a resurgence of of him reopening and that it was going to be you know of, of some kind of longevity. But uh, maybe I misread that post. But I thought I saw a post where he had been closed for a portion of time. He was going back in. It was you know going to be this whole new thing. And then the video hits today and he's uh, out of business. So. Uh, sorry to see that, nonetheless, and we look forward to uh, getting an interview with him. Sure, Rusty wants an interview on his food truck uh, podcast as well, uh, but we'll save that for another day. Uh, Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. You knew, you knew there was a Kansas City Barbecue Society's Hall of Fame in the works. Yes, I knew that. 100% yes. John, you knew that there was a KCBS Hall of Fame in the works. Embarrassingly, no, I did not. Doug, you knew? Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, I can answer this two ways. If I wasn't me, I would not have any idea. Because I'm me, I knew like, uh, I don't know, a year ago. But just wondering where my guys fell in on this so majority knew about it john i am a little shocked that maybe you weren't tipped off in some form or fashion but that's all right we'll go to you with this question john 100 percent yes or 100 percent no you believe mike mills belongs in the kansas city barbecue society's hall of fame yes or no 100 percent yes or any barbecue hall of fame yes doug Yes or no on Mike Mills in the KCBS Hall of Fame? My, in, and let the hate mill begin. My initial thought was along John's line, lines, but uh, I'm going to, I'm not convinced. No. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. You believe Mike Mills belongs in the KCBS Hall of Fame? Not only the KCBS, but I'm with John on all the barbecue things and the curling Hall of Fame. And Whatever that curling. dude can get in, I'm going to vote him in. Wow. All right. So, Rusty, Mr. Positivity is in with full effect. Uh, I'm here 100% along with Doug. Mm. No. Uh, I mean, he's he's held some KCBS uh, competitions. Uh, praise the Lord, a revered competition, but is dual sanctioned. Uh, if I go back over Mike Mills' KCBS winning career, I mean, show me where he belongs in the KCBS Hall of Fame. Look, nobody, nobody, Rusty, reveres Mike's career more than me or appreciates him more than me. He's in the guest Hall of Fame for the Barbecue Central Show for crying out loud, posthumously. However, to the question... There are no yeses allowed. It's only no's. I mean, come on. Give me a break. Next question. Doug, we're back with you. We're ripping through these, by the way. 100% yes or 100% no. You were shocked to hear that there is a 10-year agreement between Smoke Slam and the Memphis River Parks Partnership. Pick myself up off the floor shocked. Yes. Rusty, you are shocked that there is a 10-year agreement in place between Smoke Slam and the Memphis River Parks Partnership. Uh, no, I'm not shocked because after Memphis and May, it's the only way they could do it probably. They haven't locked that shit down. <laughs> John, 100% yes or 100% no? You're completely shocked to hear that it was a 10-year agreement between Smoke Slam and Memphis River Parks. Yeah, I'm shocked. Ten years is like a medical building lease. Ten years is an eternity in business. I don't want to throw a wrench into this show. However, I just saw something pop on the instant chat that I'm going to show, and I'm going to get everybody's reaction to this. Jason Pettis just wrote it. Are we certain that assurity is an actual word? Jason, do you ever listen to the fucking show? You're you're banned from the show. You can never listen to the show again. You're out of the show. You can never watch. I mean, Jason, are you kidding me with this? 
I don't know how many times I have said of my own accord that assurity is not a word. Look it up in the dictionary. It's not there. I've made it up. Don't ever use it in public amongst professionals and friends because you're going to look like a dick. It's not a word, but it's funny here on the show. That's it. That's it. All right. We'll get the show back on the tracks and away we go. Oh, wait. We haven't finished yet. So John said yes. Uh, I uh, am also in agreement with Doug and John on this. I'm, I, I couldn't. I was right on the floor passed out with Doug when Melzy Wilson told me that there was a 10-year agreement. Rusty, why does a 10-year agreement make sense in your world of realism? Well, like I said, with Memphis and May, they had to, you know, the whole park situation's all, you know, up in the air now. And if I was looking to do something in that area, I'd be like, well, we need to lock this down for the duration. And then I, you know, get what you can get out of it. You know, that's, I think that's good business on their part after what happened with Memphis. So are you of the opinion that Memphis River, uh, Memphis River Parks said, hey, smoke slam, you need to nut up to a decade in order to, to get the spot or vice versa you know like if we're going to do this and bring revenue to the city we need this park you mm. know for a long time like a decade you know either one john you have any further insight onto that no i'm sticking with my guns 10 years is an eternity in a business contract it's a long time and i think doug could probably confirm that belief i mean you can't if you're going to lease a building the only way you're going to get a 10 year lease is if you're a medical building because of the extent of the build out. 10 years is a long time of business. Doug, correct me if I'm wrong. John, do you think before we get to Doug and Doug, I'll, I'll ask you to follow up here in a second. Would you, would you believe, and we have, it's only speculation on our part just to make sure. Would you believe that there are rip cords in this contract? Oh, absolutely. There is. There's no doubt about it. There's a rip cord in every contract with the dominant party. I will say. All right, Doug, uh, your thoughts on the 10 year agreement? Actually, in business purchases, the Small Business Administration makes you, requires you to have at least a lease that's in the length of 10 years. Now, length of 10 years means you sign up for two to four, let's say, or, uh, and, and then you have some options at the uh, leasees option not the landlord to extend it if you want if you can come to terms <laughs> so you just have to have that now hey looking at it maybe it's a, a power play to a keep memphis in may out and then b the rent uh, of of not having a an event might be cheaper than the insurance bill that they're going to get every year <laughs> yeah i'm i'm totally interested to see how this whole thing is going to play out Every week that it gets closer, I get more excited. I've never been this excited for a competition weekend to take place. Then it's going to be Memphis and May and Smokeland just to see how this whole thing ends up shaking out. Again, uh, 10 years is might as well be 100 years in business. I believe that there are rip cords all over the place uh, for both sides. So this thing has to pan out. Like You can't have a 10-year agreement and this thing is a financial loser for two or three years in a row, like big time. I don't know if anybody saw the uh, the article, or maybe you just signed it to me, Doug. But the the loss on Memphis in May last year was three point four million dollars. I'm not saying that Smoke Slam is going to be that big of a loser, but even if it's half that, that's a big loss every year. So we have to see how it pans out. If if it's going to be a loser, I can't imagine that you're going to see it ten years down the road. Also, I'm not in disagreeance with this keeping something else out of Tom Lee Park as well, although I think the $1.4 million damage bill last year was incentive enough for them to never come back to Tom Lee Park. And we'll continue to track this event, see how it goes. I lost track. Who gets it? Is it you, John? Sure. 100% yes or 100% no. Competing... In Smoke Slam this year, hold your best shot to win because many other big teams will still go to Memphis and May. Why well, I like that uh, thought process, I'm going to say no. It's yep. like you're, it's any other competition. Your chances are just as good. Any, any given Sunday, man, you're on the field. 
Doug, 100% yes or 100% no. Competing in Smoke Slam this year holds your best shot to win because many other big teams will still go to Memphis and May. Heck yeah, if there's half the number of teams that they're going to have in the future. Rusty, best shot to win this year? Yeah, I think it's more of a crapshoot than it ever will be, you know, as they get the judges in that might be newer than normal and things like that. And the teams might not be as ca- high caliber. So I think it's probably, yeah, you probably have your best shot this year. I'm going to make it 75%. Yes, as I've said it many weeks in a row, I think you have teams. If this was in a separate weekend, you could see a lot of those teams are going to be competing in Memphis and May, then loading in for Smoke Slam and. They're just really good caliber teams. I'm not trying to take anything away from the other teams that are going to be showing up, but if you're somebody that has never gotten a sniff at Smokes or at Memphis and May, you have a good shot at winning. Dude, this is a lot of money. Period. Like from a competition standpoint, why would you go anywhere else that weekend other than trying to get your ass into the Memphis contest so you can win a category? major category and get 15 grand that's more than most overall prize purses in any kcbs contest going on right now and then two if you win that now you're in the running to win the whole thing and you get 50 grand by the way you can win ancillaries as well and win additional money like are you kidding me this is huge money i don't know why anybody else is competing in any other event kcbs fba st louis memphis and may or whatever everybody should be trying to get in to smoke slam to try and win that money because everybody complains about how they're losing effing money all the time to competition barbecue. Go where the money is. All right, Doug. 100% yes or 100% no, and it's a re-ask from last month. I'm just trying to see if anybody switched opinions after seeing a bunch of reviews and other influencers talk about it. The GE Indoor Smoker will be a breakout success in 2024. Yes or no? I am staying the same as last month. No. No. Mm. Rusty, yes or no? Uh, We actually are going to release a podcast about this very thing this Thursday. Um, And I was able to learn more about it. Uh I think it'll be, I think it'll do well, actually. I think it'll be really well. I think it's not going to be blockbuster, but it's going to be well. I think it's going to be well. John, Blockbuster? <laughs> we keep talking about this thing like I'm wondering if they're paying you. Like, this <laughs> thing's a piece of shit. Twice. It's going nowhere. <laughs> we talked about it twice. I know, but it's, it keeps coming up. It's like, stop. Take this freaking appliance off your counter, throw it in the fucking garbage bin, and get it the fuck out of my house. Wow, I'm like, no, look at you. It's going nowhere. John's like, on one. <laughs> All right, I like it. I like the passion. The only reason I'm bringing it up, because I haven't seen any of the other ones that had the potential to retread go like, I mean, current. Yeah, no. I mean, I talked about it last week with the product manager, but I don't see any influencers talking about it, but that G indoor one, I see, you know, shooting all over the place. So I don't know if that decided to sway anybody from 30 days from the last time. Evidently not. All right. Last one, before we get to the break, we'll finish them out here. We'll go to rusty, uh, rusty, 100% yes. Or 100% no. Weber exhibiting their new grills in a separate location not related to CES, but close enough to get CES media coverage is a bitch move. <laughs> no. It's no. No. Mm-hmm. That a, no. John, bitch move? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, no. Doug, 100% yes or 100% no. Weber exhibiting their grills in a separate location not related to CES, but close enough to CES to get media coverage. Bitch move. I would say yes. It's almost genius, but it's more of a bitch move. And it is a 100% bold-ass bitch move. I mean, dude... (laughs) Be part of CES. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna go and take advantage of CES, uh, all right. Just because I'm a hypocrite, I like the concept of it. But you, you, you didn't go out of your way to say we're not at CES. And when CES reporters came over to give you the coverage that you wanted, you didn't say, oh, no, 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 no. 
We're not here for CES. Go uh, go to the people that paid money and exhibited in the hall at CES. We're here on something else, something private, and you're not included. No, no, no. You welcomed them in. You invited them all over. You invite them from all different countries to come over and cook and touch and play. And all those people were writing articles about CES and new grills being launched at CES. But they weren't at CES. They weren't there, bitch. They weren't there. All right. We're on one tonight, guys. I love it. So take some water and get ready for some new hot takes when we come back from break. We got plenty left. Before we rejoin the embedded correspondent, we say this. Listen up, gang. Our pal at Big Papa Smoker, Sterling Ball, has something special just for you, listeners of the show. Whether you're a seasoned pit master or a grilling newbie, Big Papa Smokers is your one-stop shop for all things barbecue. From their championship rubs, mouth-watering sauces, essential accessories... They've got what you need to take your food to the next level, both on the competition circuit and in your own backyard. Here's the cherry on top. Big Pop Smokers is offering the listeners of the Barbecue Central Show an exclusive deal. Use the promo code REMPE at checkout. That's R-E-M-P-E. And you get $10 off your next $50 purchase of rubs, sauces, and accessories. Imagine the possibilities. Evaluate your ribs with Big Papa's Sweet Money. You can add desert gold to the top of your chicken, or better yet, pick up Double Secret and put it on your steak. Head on over to BigPapaSmokers.com and start shopping today and start shaving today. Shaving? Saving. Use promo code REMPE at checkout. Claim your dollar, uh, your $10 off your next order of $50 or more. And don't forget to check out Big Papa's full line of recipes at CookingWithBigPapa.com. Follow them on all the social media platforms. It's our pal Sterling over at BigPapaSmokers.com. We're back with more embedded correspondence right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. All right, and we welcome you back. This portion of the show being brought to you by JRE Tobacco, makers of Aladino cigars, amongst some other brands. If you want to try one, I think today is National Cigar Day, actually. So if you want to try a cigar from Aladino, you hit me up on the emails. I send you some samples. You enjoy those premium handmade cigars. And then you find a retailer near you to fulfill your new hobby, smoking hand-rolled premium cigars. JREtobacco.com to find a retailer near you. If you're not sure, or if you have a retailer that you frequent and they don't carry Aladino cigars, you tell them to carry them immediately, if not sooner. We are back with the embedded correspondence here, and we have a new surety question. John, we'll start with you. 100% yes or 100% no. You think it's sheer coincidence that Meat Church released a rub named Blanco when Rio Valley Meats, also from Texas, has a rub already out named Blanco. I'm just going to go, sure, it was coincidence. All right. Yeah, just to be like, yes. whatever. There you go. Uh, Doug, yes or no on coincidence? I know that he reached out to Fred, and Matt really isn't a competition guy, so I'm going to say yes. I actually do believe it's a coincidence. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. You think it's sheer coincidence that Meat Church released a rub named Blanco when Rio Valley Meats, also from Texas, has a rub already named Blanco. Coincidence. I don't think he knows much about that side of things. All right, gang. I... uh, Every fiber of my being wants to believe that Doug and Rusty and a sarcastic John are right. 
that is sheer coincidence. But Matt is a keen business guy. And moreover than any of that bullshit, what are we talking about here specifically? Texas. If it's one thing I know, Texas knows everything about Texas because Texas thinks they know everything about everything. So I find it not coincidental that Matt wouldn't know that in his home state of Texas, that there's another rub that does very well that also has the name Blanco. I'm not saying that Fred should have went out and trademarked. I mean, Blanco was white and Spanish. I probably can't even trademark Blanco. Or maybe you can get it like balled into rub. I don't know. But not maliciously, but I just find it hard to believe, knowing Texas the way I do, that Matt didn't know anything about it and decided to leverage his time on Jimmy Fallon to launch a new rub that was named Blanco. My two cents. Would love to have Matt on to talk about it, of course. Uh, Doug, what do you know from uh, these guys talking together? Was this before the launch or after? They didn't talk. It was voicemail from uh, from Matt to uh, to Fred. He didn't answer it, and and I think he got a text as, as well. So, um, uh, you know, post, just post like show? you said in terms – Post show, post show. yes, yeah. right. post show, um, and so the because uh, I talked to Fred at uh, the Houston rodeo, so I, you know, I actually think that, like you say, he was rushing it to get it announced on Jimmy Fallon. I actually went to his website. He's not even really selling; it's more like a pre-sale sort of thing. Mm. And uh, you know, uh, shame on them for not doing their homework. And uh, uh, he should know, but like I say, he's really not a competition guy, and he's probably not not aware of kind of what. The names are of uh, you know of anybody's reps. Uh, Rusty, do you have any further takes on that? Or are you good? Uh, no, the, no, no other than kind of what Doug said. He's not in the competition world, and I think people buy that Blanco rub are more in competition spec, and I don't think he pays attention to the rest of it. I, I think it's just pure coincidence. I don't think he meant to. John, are you buying what Rusty's selling? <laughs> This is going to keep my mouth shut on this whole thing. I'm like, are y'all kidding me? Like, come on. Now, now, if we go with the whole vibe of it all, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to shut the fuck up right now. I'm I'm out. I'm out of this one because I'm going to say some shit that I can't take back. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just going to say again, uh, Matt's in the rub business and Matt's a smart business guy and smart business guys happen to know what's on the market. That's it. Nice question. Oh, wait, by the way, let me back up. That's the drum sound effect in reverse. You don't have to be in competition to use a rub, okay? 100% yes or 100% no, Doug. You rinse your steaks off under the sink before you season them. I don't even know where this is coming from, no. Mm. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% or you rinse your steaks off under the sink before you season them. Uh, no, but I know a very well-respected mm. steak cook that does. Name them. We're courageous on the show. Terry Roan. Who? Terry Roan. Terry Roan. Terry Roan. <laughs> I'm surprised you named them. All right. Appreciate that. John, 100% yes or 100% no, you rinse your steaks off under the sink before you season them. I'm super relieved to hear, hear Doug say that because I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> like, so I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the outlier here. No, no, I don't. Uh, by the way, I don't either. I only ask because there's a a guy that owns a barbecue restaurant east side of Cleveland here, and he was doing a TikTok reel of how he cooks steaks. Looked like a great steak. It found its way under the sink, under the faucet. It's like, I always I wash off my... And I, I never do this. What's rule number two of the show? Don't get hooked. I couldn't help myself because I live in hypocrisy. So I picked up the phone and I thumbed out a DM and I said, Hey, why are you washing... Why are you rinsing your meat? Like you say you're washing it, but water doesn't wash anything. You're just making the steak wet. And he wrote back, 
where I come from, this is what we do, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay. I stopped because there was a big portion of me that wanted to proceed through troll and go, you know, this is the problem. You're putting out all this BS information, but I just wanted to see if anybody else was in the steak rinsing party, but Something else we could get into down the road, maybe not, but just want to see where everybody was. Which leads me to this. John, you're last on this. Rusty, 100% yes or 100% no. Smoked cream cheese is, in a word, nonsense. I've never had it, but it looks real good, so I would say no. So, yes, it's nonsense. Oh, wait, no, 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 okay. no, I tricked myself that time. Doug, 100% yes or 100% no, smoked cream cheese is in a word nonsense. I'm not sure it get, belongs in a book, but I'm going to say no. 100% nonsense. Of course. John, 100% yes or 100% no, smoked cream cheese is in a word nonsense. My answer is really going to surprise you. All right. Smoked cream cheese is not nonsense. 100% no. However, if you come at me like smoking cream cheese is some kind of fucking thing, like you're doing something and there's a recipe in your bio, that part of it is nonsense. The actual product, smoked cream cheese is delicious. Stop putting it on your fucking Instagram, putting it on your website. Stop pretending like you're doing something. That part of the smoked cream cheese is nonsense. Rusty. So no, that wasn't the question. 100% yes or 100% no. You have tried the Flying Dutchman burger trend that is all over Instagram right now. Dude, in and out Come on. This, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're on the West Coast. I forget. in and out has been doing this since the freaking 70s. So, yeah, absolutely tried that a thousand times. John, Flying Dutchman? I haven't tried it. There's no in and out here. You could make it. You're not making it? Why would I? Take all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Doug, one hundred percent yes or one hundred percent no. You have tried the Flying Dutchman burger trend that's all over Instagram right now. We've got plenty of In and Out, and I'm not going there, but I will make it at at my house, but not yet. No, not yet. Mm. Let me think about this one. Two oh. gargantuan thick slices of onions in lieu of buns. Fuck no. <laughs> oh, Rusty. Quick note. The reason why it's called the Flying Dutchman is because at one of the In-N-Out's regular customers was a race car driver named, and they call him the Flying Dutchman. And that's how he liked his burgers. He just wanted onions with some cheese and some stuff on it. And that's where it came from. <laughs> In-N-Out invented it based off that guy. who That's how he wanted his burger. Look at this guy. Rusty lending not only entertainment, but education to the show as we get ready to clo out, uh, close out the lover's month of February. Here we go. Rusty, back to you. 100% yes or 100% no, you are totally aware of who Barbecue with Jake is. No, I don't know who that is. I'm not aware. Doug? Nope. Never heard of him. Hmm. John, you are totally aware of who Barbecue with Jake is, yes or no? I'm just so fucking relieved that those two don't know, because I never heard of the fucker, so I don't feel like the outlier. <laughs> In the first unanimous answer here this evening, I have no idea. I started seeing this guy's name pop up today, and I quickly went on his Instagram page. Uh, 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 unbeknownst to all of us, he is very popular. Got a huge audience. He's coming out, of course, because everybody else does with rubs here very quickly. He did a podcast with Heath Riles uh, during the shoot in the queue or whatever it's called. So he, he's obviously of some kind of an accomplished social media guy or something, but... I hadn't been aware of him at all, so I snuck it in right at the last minute here before we went on air 
through the interways here this evening. Rusty, you have something to add? Wait, I think I might know who it is. He's got a really thick southern draw. Yeah, I mean, but so does Malcolm. Nah, but this one, this guy, I think he was a really big dude and lost a lot of weight. I th- I know who he is. Well, I don't know if I want to let you change your answer because that makes us non-unanimous. <laughs> change the answer. All right. Change Rusty, the Rusty answer. somehow knows about him now. Suspect. Whatever. Douglas. This question, by the way, submitted from my pal Jason or my pal Jason over at the Howard Stern Show. One hundred percent yes or one hundred percent no. Wait, let me uh, let me start over. Doug, you're going to be going last. Thank you. Yeah, Rusty, one hundred percent yes or one hundred percent no. You have at one point in your life craved a hot dog. Yes or no? One point, like once a week. Yeah, for sure. John, craved a hot dog. Yeah, I'm rolling with Rusty at least once a week. Me? Never. I will eat hot. Never mind. Doug, 100% yes or 100% no. You have at one point in your life craved a hot dog. Craved? No way. Check the 2018 Barbecue Central show tape. I even added a get that weak stuff out of here. I will eat hot dogs. I will go to hot dog places. There's a hot dog place on the near west side of Cleveland that I've just recently become familiar with called Glizzies on my mind. I don't know when hot dogs became Glizzies. I thought that was like a, a Pennsylvania thing because my daughter goes to school in PA and towards Pittsburgh she called them glizzies when she came home one time. I was like, what the fuck is a glizzy? She's like, it's a hot dog. I was like, I've never heard about that. Doug, are you familiar with glizzies as a hot dog term before? No. Rusty? Rhymes with Rizzy. <laughs> no, don't, don't change the no. name of hot dogs, bro. That, no, 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 no. We don't do that. John, not do you know America. glizzy? Not in- Just in the last like four or five months when I started the, asking the question, when did we change the name to hot dog? Oh. And is that the new hot dog pronoun? And can we still call it a hot dog or is that offensive? Yes. To well, we glizzy? can still call it a hot dog. No doubt about it. But uh, there's this place on the near west side called Glizzy's on my mind that has certainly inspired me where if I'm the, on the west side of town during the hours that are open, I'll stop by this hot dog cart. They're making some pretty crazy looking hot dogs. But have I ever craved a hot dog? It never, ever. <clears throat> Never ever crave the hot dog. We're almost there, gang. Two left. We're going to run out of time. 100% yes or 100... Everybody still hear me? I just blinked out in my ears. All right. 100% yes or 100% no. Rusty, you would try a pork-flavored latte. John, could you imagine not craving a hot dog, like, ever? Isn't that something? (laughs) Um, Yes, I absolutely would. Yes, I absolutely would, 100%. Doug, you would try a pork-flavored latte. (laughs) No, thank you. John, 100% yes or 100% no, you would try a pork-flavored latte. Only if it was an assignment that you gave us for an upcoming segment. But other than that, no. no. Uh, I can't assign it because it's currently only in China. So it's a Starbucks special release. It's a pork-flavored latte. They have some type of pork-flavored syrup that they're putting in there. There's also a piece of pork that goes on a skewer and then is added as garnish. Would I ever try a pork-flavored latte? You're damn right I would not ever try a pork-flavored latte. No, 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 no. That is 100% gross. John's going to wrap it up here for us this evening. 100% yes or 100% no. John, you are down with the cold plunge trend. I'm not. I'm Norwegian. We used to do saunas, grandpa threw you in the snow. No, it's not fun. It's not new. It's been around for centuries. No. Not Doug, down. cold plunge trend. Yes or no? I'm from Texas. We're wussies when it comes to cold. No way. I feel like if anybody's going to be down with the cold plunge, it's going to be Mr. Hipster. Rusty, down with the cold plunge trend? You're wrong, dude. That's just for those boss bros. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> boss bro. <laughs> I know exactly who you mean, too, because I am no. I, 
I can't even begin. There's there's a slew of people out there who openly admit that they won't do it. However, they buy everything positive associated with it. But they won't go to the next step and then put the benefits on their body by going in. I can't even wrap my head around the health benefits that people are telling me that happen to your body when you get into 50 degree cold water or colder. You see these maniacs on Instagram? By the way, no disrespect to my guy uh, Julian from Garden State Barbecue. He's one of those boss bro maniacs right now doing cold plunge. And he lives in New Jersey and it's cold out there most of the time right now. So before he gets into his cold plunge tub, he takes a 20 pound dumbbell and has to cram the top of the ice that is formed overnight before he can fit his body into the cold plunge for three minutes. I can't even conceptualize in my head why that would benefit me at all. I hate cold more than Texas people hate cold. I, I would do sauna stuff every day of the week. I've always been I would rather sweat guy than I would rather be cold guy. Because to me, I can always cool down. If I'm cold, it takes a lot for me to get warm. Like multiple layers and blankets and fires. And I got to curl up. You know, I'm a little baby bitch. I'm the opposite of boss bro. <laughs> Whatever Rusty was talking about. I'm that. I'm, I'm, I'm not boss bro. So we're done with that. All right. So we have time for promotion, Doug. What are we promoting before we head out here this evening? Next month, allegedly, I'm going to have three rubs coming out, an all-purpose rub yeah. seasoning, a Texas brisket rub, and a finishing dust that's for the barbecuers because it's paprika-based. Hmm. And uh, these are all going to be um, captive Home Depot all releases? Bites. No, the, no, uh, just Home Depot's the Texas brisket. Okay. Um, the other ones will be coming out of uh, Old World Spice and Barbecue Spot. We might have to have you on as a segment to talk about a business plan execution for this. Yeah. It's been a long process. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to line it up. Rusty, what are you promoting tonight? Um, by the way, uh, Doug will be coming out with a rub called Perfecto. It'll be fantastic. Um, <laughs> oh, no, it's funny. It's funny you say that. I told I told Fred he wouldn't mind if I came out with Gringo Gringo Perfecto since he calls my carne gasada Gringo carne gasada. Thank you. Really? That's great. All right. Good call, yes. Rusty. All right. Aside from being a wit and wisdom here this evening, Rusty, what are we promoting? Um, I uh, the Pit Masters podcast. Check it out. And we're wrapping up the final t uh, interviews for the uh, On the Road a Food Truck podcast as well. That'll be coming out. So are, are you? Did Hopefully you record soon. the the food truck podcast like as a season, and you're just going to drop them all over the place, or what? As many as I could get done. We'll see how it goes. I'm just so freaking busy yeah. that I wanted to get them all done, so I didn't have to worry about it. And hopefully, I can release enough or have enough in the bag where I'm releasing like five ahead. All so right. I have five in the bag and releasing one. Stuff like that. John, what are we promoting today? I'm just going to take my time and say, Rusty's podcast is like waiting for Dr. Barbecue's restaurant to open. I'm a fan. I can't wait to get out there to go have a hot dog because I'm kind of craving. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's John from Michigan, Rusty from Utah, and Doug from Texas. You know them. You love them. They are the embedded correspondents right there. And we will see you at the end of March, gents. And that takes us up to the end of the show. So I will remove these out of the queue. I will take this one out. And that's what the end of the show music sounds like. All the way back in the first hour, we were joined by first time guest, Anthony Murphy. Murph from the Beefy Boys, thebeefyboys.com. If you are going to England and you might be craving a ham, I've craved hamburgers. Never craved a hot dog and you're craving a hamburger over there that is elite level, award-winning shit, go to the Beefy Boys, thebeefyboys.com. You can check location, hours of operation, menu, all that stuff. Very impressive. Looking forward to having Murph on again in the future. And then 
We caught back up with our pals John and John McLemore, the McLemore Boys, associated website, themclemoreboys.com. They have a new book that's going to be coming out. They're going to be coming back in about six weeks to talk about it, amongst other things. And then the second hour, all embedded correspondence all the time. As we end the poll here this evening, if you can believe it, 40% of you are saying three seconds or less, Quentin can kick my ass. 40% of you are saying 10 seconds, Quentin can kick my ass. So there's a tie at three and 10. Simple math will tell you that 20% is bringing up the seven seconds. I mean, in any event, in three, seven, or 10 seconds, I'm getting my ass kicked. Did everybody overlook that part? So we're going to end the poll right now. If you missed it, we will give you poll results beginning of the first hour next week. Uh, big show. We're in March next week. So we got Malcolm Reed. We have John Tezar from Knife Restaurant. Sam, the cooking guy. And there's somebody else that I can't think about right off the top of my head. But the whole show, the whole show is filled through March already. And halfway through April, if you can believe it. It's a big show. People want to be on it. We got a new sponsor coming next week. Schwank Grills. Excited to tell you about that. In fact, John Tezar will be telling you a little bit about that as well. He uses one of those. So how do I always leave you? September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. This is your program host and proudest American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. Hi, this is Jeff Stone of Grandpa's Fried Barbecue from the Panhandle of Florida, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show.